The Widening U.S.-China Gap in Technology and Weaponry Wake up! Why is the technological gap with China actually widening? The cruel reality behind generational gaps in weaponry. I'm Lao Lu, and today I'm going against the grain to reveal a truth deliberately avoided by public discourse. While domestic media indulges in the euphoria of quantum supremacy and electromagnetic railgun leadership, the underlying logic that truly determines great power competition is undergoing a disruptive transformation. Last week, I obtained a non-classified summary of the U.S. Department of Defense's 2024 China Military Power Report. Three sets of data in it sent shivers down my spine, the U.S. Air Force's new generation Loyal Wingman AI aerial combat system has completed lift-fire tests, while China's similar project remains in the laboratory phase, the U.S. Navy's first Columbia-class nuclear submarine is about to enter service, with stealth capabilities at least a generation ahead of China's most advanced Type 096. Even more critically, U.S. investment intensity in basic research is 2.3 times that of China, a gap that is translating into a chasm of technological generational differences. This isn't alarmism, it's based on first-hand information from 127 global research institutions and 34 military industrial enterprises. Today's content might overturn your perception of the U.S.-China technological gap, but please believe that this is the cruel reality you won't see in mainstream media. Next, I will dissect the true picture of the U.S.-China gap from three dimensions, technological foundation, weapon systems, and strategic ecosystem. Behind every piece of data lies the bloodshed of great power rivalry. I. Technological Foundation, the Matthew Effect of Basic Research In 2024, China's R&D investment exceeded 3.6 trillion yuan. Behind this seemingly massive figure lies a structural imbalance. Basic research accounts for only 6.91%, while this proportion is as high as 17.8% in the United States. This disparity reflects the fundamental differences in the two countries' science and technology development strategies. Taking the field of artificial intelligence as an example, the U.S. holds over 60% of patents for underlying algorithms like the transformer architecture and diffusion models. These foundational innovations constitute the core framework of AI technology. In contrast, China is currently focused more on functional iteration and scenario expansion at the application layer, like building various styles of architecture on an existing foundation without fully mastering the design codes of the foundation itself. According to the Stanford 2025 AI Index, although the performance gap between top U.S. and Chinese models has narrowed to 0.3 percent, demonstrating significant progress in China's algorithm optimization and data training, the U.S. advantage in AI chips and computing infrastructure remains unshakable. NVIDIA's cutting-edge chips like the H100 and B200 have long dominated the global AI computing market, and their CUDA ecosystem forms a technical barrier, making over 70% of global AI companies reliant on their computing platform. Moreover, through national programs like the Advanced Communications Technologies Research Act CRA, the U.S. continues to invest in building exascale supercomputer clusters, consistently maintaining a lead in computing scale and energy efficiency. In comparison, while China has built Tianha and Sunway series supercomputers, it still needs to overcome bottlenecks in key areas such as chip self-sufficiency and computing network collaboration. Basic research is like planting trees, China is now enjoying the fruits of seeds sown by Europe and the U.S. a century ago. Looking back at history, since the 19th century Industrial Revolution, the West has continuously invested in basic disciplines such as theoretical physics and chemical engineering. Pioneering theories like Planck's quantum hypothesis and Einstein's theory of relativity laid the foundation for subsequent technological explosions. In contrast, China's basic research system began its construction in the mid-20th century. Although it achieved leapfrog breakthroughs in projects like the two bombs and one satellite, it still requires long-term accumulation in underlying fields such as materials science and basic mathematics. While the U.S. is frantically sowing seeds in cutting-edge fields like quantum computing and brain-computer interfaces, we are still struggling to import advanced lithography machines. 
The U.S. has built the world's first quantum computer chip production line, and IBM's qubit count continues to set new records. In the field of brain-computer interfaces, Neuralink's wireless implantable device has completed non-human primate experiments and is only one step away from human commercialization. In contrast, in the semiconductor industry, Dutch ASML's EUV lithography machines are still subject to international technological blockades. Although China has made progress in DUV lithography machines, in sub-1 nanometer process technology, from light source systems to precision optical components, it still faces systemic bottlenecks such as material purity and precision manufacturing. This gap cannot be bridged by simply concentrating efforts on major undertakings, because scientific breakthroughs are never assembly line operations. Basic research requires decades of continuous free exploration and the tolerance of a 99% failure rate. Taking superconductor research as an example, it took humanity 75 years from the discovery of mercury superconductivity in 1911 to the breakthrough in copper-based high-temperature superconducting materials in 1986. And the Oak Ridge National Laboratory in the U.S. is still continuously investing in theoretical calculations for superconductors, generating tens of thousands of invalid datasets every year. The seemingly inefficient exploration is precisely the necessary path for disruptive innovation. 2. Weapon Systems, The Death Spiral of Generational Gaps Taking the chip field as an example, the U.S., with TSMC's 3 nanometers and 2 nanometers advanced process technologies and its monopolistic position in key areas such as EDA design software and semiconductor materials, has built a complete and leading chip industry chain. In contrast, while China has broken through 14 nanometers process technology, there is still a significant gap in high-end chip manufacturing, with some key equipment and materials still relying on imports. Another example is aero engine technology. The US F-119 PW100 engine has a thrust-to-weight ratio exceeding 10, enabling the F-22 fighter jet to achieve super maneuverability, while China's turbofan series engines still need continuous improvement in reliability, lifespan, and thrust-to-weight ratio. These real-world examples directly reflect the differences in the two countries' development in core technological fields. In the field of smart weapons, the U.S. DARPA's Deep Green system has achieved AI-assisted tactical-level command and decision-making, while China's similar systems still rely on human intervention. In terms of naval power, the U.S. Virginia-class nuclear submarine stealth level is 20 decibels lower than China's Type 094, meaning that when Chinese submarines navigate the Pacific, it's like dancing with a flashlight in the dark. More fatally, the U.S. military-industrial complex has formed a closed loop of demand or and in combat, while the Chinese military-industrial system still has a gap from laboratory to battlefield. Generational gaps in weaponry are not simply comparisons of performance parameters but the overwhelming dominance of an entire combat system. When U.S. drone swarms can conduct autonomous coordinated operations, our drones are still competing on individual flight endurance. This gap is like cavalry facing musketeers in the cold weapon era, numerical advantage is meaningless in the face of a generational gap. 3. A strategic ecosystem, the Achilles heel of systemic capability. The U.S. Joint All Domain Command and Control, JADZ2, system has achieved full-dimensional data fusion across land, sea, air, space, and electronic warfare. Relying on the Starlink satellite network, 5G edge computing nodes, and distributed combat cloud platform, it has built an intelligent command system with millisecond-level response. In the 2023 Pacific Dragon Joint Military Exercise, the JADC-2 system successfully achieved a full closed-loop control process from satellite reconnaissance to target discovery and drone strike, with the entire process taking only 17 seconds. In stark contrast, China's command system still suffers from siloed issues, with inconsistent data interface standards among different military branches and cross-platform data transmission delays exceeding 200 milliseconds, severely restricting the effectiveness of joint operations. In the semiconductor field, the U.S. has built full-chain control from design software to manufacturing equipment through the CHIP4 alliance. 
This alliance controls over 90% of global EUV lithography machine supply and monopolizes EDA design tools like Cadence and Synopsys, forming a technological blockade against the chip industry. While China has made breakthroughs in mid to low end chips, its self sufficiency rate for high end chips is less than 15%. And it is entirely reliant on imports for processes below 7 nanometers. What's alarming is that the US Department of Commerce's Chips and Science Act, enacted in 2022, further strengthens control over advanced processes by attracting companies like TSMC and Samsung to build factories in the US through high subsidies. More dangerously, the US is using technological hegemony to lock China into the low to mid end of the industry chain. Its export control list has expanded to include chip manufacturing equipment below 14 nanometers, attempting to cut off the technological path for China's semiconductor industry upgrading. China often prides itself on having a complete industrial chain, but true systemic capability is not about assembling parts, it's about making every link indispensable. Looking back at history, since the Industrial Revolution, Competition in manufacturing has long evolved from simple capacity stacking to control over core technical standards and ecosystem. The U.S., relying on decades of accumulated technological hegemony, has built an innovation system of software-defining hardware through the deep binding of Windows and iOS operating systems to global terminal devices and the standardized control of industry production processes by professional software like Adobe and AutoCAD. It has achieved comprehensive penetration from the underlying architecture to application scenarios. This technological monopoly is not only reflected at the code level but also by packaging its technical specifications into global common standards through international standards organizations like IEEE and ISO, forming an ecological closed loop of technology patenting, patent standardization, and standard globalization. In the semiconductor field, the ARM architecture licensing model and EDA design software ecosystem, led by U.S. companies, mean that the global chip industry is constrained by its technical standards in key links such as design, manufacturing, and packaging. When a country attempts to break through technological blockades, the U.S. only needs to adjust technical licensing agreements or upgrade design standards to instantly plunge the relevant industrial chain into a predicament of no chips available, no code to compile. This dimensional reduction strike relying on technical standards and ecological discourse power is far more destructive than simple hardware embargoes. It not only limits the physical output of technology but also invisibly dissolves the opponent's possibility of building an independent ecosystem, making industrial upgrading fall into a vicious cycle of always chasing, always lagging behind. Today's China is like an athlete who has just learned to sprint but has been pulled into a marathon race. We can cheer for localized breakthroughs, but we must also soberly realize that a truly technologically powerful nation is not built by accumulating individual champions, but requires profound basic research, a complete industrial ecosystem, and strong strategic resolve. If you agree with this rational thinking, please click follow. I will continue to reveal the underlying logic of great power competition. Next preview, When AI Meets War, The Life and Death Race of U.S.-China Smart Weapon Competition. Thank you for reading. May we grow together in rational discussion. See you next time.